balanced soils deliver fertility more efficiently to your crops. And one of the best ways to measure this balance is to examine the base saturation percentage of the cations in your soil. Percent base saturation is essentially a calculated value looking at those cations, potassium, calcium, magnesium, along with hydrogen and sodium, and putting all of those nutrients on an even playing field. So we're able to compare apples to apples amongst those cations. A lot of times we look at soil tests, somebody will ask us for a recommendation, but it's missing a critical part. That's the base saturation. From the base saturation, it's gonna give us the opportunity to decide what kind of soil amendments we might need in order to maximize the field's potential. There is a direct connection between CEC and percent base saturation. As we talked before, we thought of CEC as a parking lot. And so a low CEC soil had very few parking spots, where a high CEC soil had many parking spots. Now to tie that into percent base saturation, we're looking at who's actually parked in those parking spots. So if we picture it you know, as cars, we're looking at how many red cars are there in relationship to how many white cars or blue cars. So it goes based upon that percentage. It's no different in the soil. Now we want to know what percentage of potassium, calcium, hydrogen, sodium, or magnesium are in those parking spots. What we're talking about when we're talking about base saturation is the ability of the soil to stay in balance. So we'd like the ratio of potassium to be between 3 and 8 percent, magnesium between 13 and 18 percent, calcium between 65 and 75 percent, our hydrogen we would like to keep below 10 percent, and sodium below 2 percent. All of those cations should add up to 100 percent. Therefore, if one of those nutrients is out of balance or too high, it's going to take something away from one of those other cations. If I have elevated magnesium, it's going to make my nitrogen less available to the plant. Uh, the movement or the mass flow of that nitrogen is going to struggle. When I have elevated calcium or magnesium, being a very strong ion, it can tie up phosphorus. So the importance of keeping those balances in the, in the base saturation uh, is important to keep other nutrients available so that the plant can utilize them at its optimum potential. When looking at a soil test, we have all of these cations at nutrient value, so either in parts per million or pounds per acre. And the difference between that and the percent base saturation is it's providing everything on a level playing field. So the ranges of normal levels in parts per million are going to vary. And if we look at it on a percent base saturation, that's just equalizing everything. So we're able to compare one cation to another. A lot of times we get soil tests and all it will show is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, maybe a micronutrient. It's missing one critical part and that's the base saturation, which is going to give us the opportunity to decide how we can best put that soil in balance so those other nutrients are going to be at their maximum potential. The percent base saturation does have a direct correlation to pH. If you're looking at those values, if we have hydrogen on there, that's going to be an indicator that you have a lower soil pH. And then on the contrary, if you're looking at that soil base saturation and you have a lot of calcium, that's going to be an indicator that your pH is on the higher side. So by simply looking at your percent base saturation, you can have a really good indicator on what nutrients you're going to struggle with as you look at your soil test. So in ordering your soil test, make sure you include base saturation. Next, we're going to talk about soil pH. If you need more information on percent base saturation, visit our website at agroliquid.com.